Hi guys and welcome back for another math lesson. This video is made for your learners to be able to demonstrate understanding of key concepts of logic and reasoning. To be more specific, at the end of this video, you will be able to communicate mathematical thinking with coherence and clarity in formulating and analyzing arguments in illustrating combinations. Let's get started! How do we count the number of ways in choosing the combination of dress we want to wear? What about the combination of food we eat? Simply, we can write down the list of all the choices we have. But what if we have a thousand of choices? Can we list down all of them? In this video, we will illustrate combination of objects and derive and use the formula to find the number of ways of selecting objects. If after the pandemic, you were given the privilege to travel to three countries with choices from Canada, Korea, Japan, Italy, Amsterdam, and Greece. If you choose to travel to Japan, Korea, and Canada, does it make any difference if you choose Korea, Canada, and Japan? Of course not, because the list refers to the same countries. Each choice that you could possibly make is called combination. On the other hand, if you choose Italy, Amsterdam, and Greece, now that is another combination. Remember, if there is a set S with N elements, and if R is non-negative integer less than or equal to N, then each subset of S containing R distinct elements is called a combination of S. The number of combinations of N objects taken R at a time is denoted by the following. So these are the symbols that you might be able to encounter when we are dealing with combinations. In this case, the value of R must not be greater than the value of N, where N is the number of objects to choose from and R is the number of objects chosen. Now, let us derive the formula for the combination. How do we find the number of combinations of n objects taken r at a time? Suppose that you are asked to find the number of diagonals does a square have. That is, two endpoints out of four endpoints. If we are going to manually list down all the diagonals formed out of the square ABCD, we will have the following. Line segments AC, CA, BD, and DB. But as you notice, we can see that AC is the same as CA. In the same manner, BD is also the same with DB. Thus, there are only two combinations. But how can we find the number of combinations more systematically? Let us consider this example. What if we are asked to find how many line segments we can name in the given line below? Let us consider this. If order of the letters is important, 
then we have the following possibilities. The number of different orders of four points taken two at a time is given by the permutation of four taken two at a time is equal to four factorial divided by four minus two factorial is equal to 12. So there are 12 possibilities. Since from our lesson in geometry, we can name line segments using letters in any order, then if we look closely, we can see that all the line segments on the same column are identical. Thus, the actual combination is the combination of 4 taken 2 at a time is equal to 12 divided by 2 which is equal to 6. Or, the permutation of 4 objects taken 2 at a time divided by 2 or the permutation of four objects taken two at a time divided by two factorial. Notice that two, or two factorial, is the number of ways of arranging two objects taken all at a time. We divided it by two factorial to eliminate the duplicates. Note that there are four objects A, B, C, and D. That's why our n is equal to 4. They are selected 2 at a time, so our r is equal to 2. And so the equation becomes, the combination of n object taken r at a time is equal to the permutation of n objects taken r at a time divided by r factorial. Since we all know that the permutation of an object is equal to n factorial divided by n minus r factorial, and the combination of an object is equal to the permutation of object divided by r factorial, we can now substitute this value to the value of this one, giving us n factorial divided by n minus r factorial over r factorial. By simplifying it further, we can finally have the formula for the permutation which is n factorial divided by r factorial times n minus r factorial. So that is how the formula for the combination was derived. Remember, the combination of n objects taken r at a time is c and r being equal to n factorial divided by r factorial times n minus r factorial, where r is less than or equal to n or greater than or equal to 0. That's all for today. Thanks for watching.